ladies and gentlemen present in the room of course. Uh, we are beginning with the second panel now, the panel discussion, the topic of which is access, ass, assessing and developing potential for leadership. And I already have on the dais Kim Feenberg, the CEO and founder of Tomorrow Trust. Let me welcome on the panel Tania Ellis, founder and managing director of the social business company. Wilk Green, hi. Is that Wilk right? The pronunciation Wilk? Thank you. Wilk Green is deputy director of the Global Good Fund. Uh, and I also have uh, Dr. Kewal Handa, who is the ex managing director of Pfizer and now runs a social responsibility company called Connexus. So, welcome uh, to the panel. Dear panelists, as the session in the morning, I propose uh, that uh, we go around uh, the panel and uh, take their views on the subject, assessing and developing potential for leadership. And after we get the thoughts from the <coughs> thought and knowledge leaders on the dais, we can go in for a Q&A session. Kim had a request. She has uh, five slides to present. So I would uh, request her to do that now before we yeah, okay. begin the discussion. So those slides could also uh, set a context on uh, what we could discuss. So Kim, would you like to Thank take you. the stage? Uh, good morning, everyone. Is this working? Okay. So, when asking uh, me to speak about accessing and developing leadership, I needed to really sit down and wonder what is a leader in the first place. So, the slide that you see in front of you, I think that leaders today are not the leaders of yesterday. And what worked in the past really doesn't work anymore. So it's about leadership, sitting down and asking them who they are and what kind of leaders do they want to be. <clears throat> so who am I? What is the macro environment that I'm working in? Uh, what is the micro environment that I'm working in? And what is the leadership capacity of the people I'm working with? And all of that seems to have changed in the last four to five years, especially in South Africa. As you heard um, both this morning, Ganesh, and afterwards, the gentleman on the last panel spoke about Mervyn King, for instance. Mervyn King is one of our patrons. And your law that you've just had brought in in India is a law that's been part of South Africa for many years now. And it's a very positive thing because what it does is that it creates leaders who have to think differently. And they have to think about how they spend their money and how they're going to report on it. And therefore, the nonprofit world has to step up. Because if you don't deliver, then your corporate partners cannot report properly <clears throat> on who you are. So leaders are different. The reality is that not everybody can be a leader. It is important to understand the attitude of the generation Y. I'm too special to be a sheep. But the fact is, is that many people are more comfortable following a leader than rather becoming a leader in a macro environment. So what's important in your organizations or in your company is to actually look and see, yes, they're not going to raise up into the ranks into higher management, but they need to be leaders even within themselves and within the department. Because the more you empower people who are working for you, the better you are going to be as an organization or as a company. So therefore, the big thing with leadership is ego. We have to put the ego aside and lock it into a drawer and develop people in order to grow up into your companies and organizations. Develop them without being afraid. And what I've come across so often, both in the corporate world, in government, as well as in the nonprofit sector, 
is that leaders are very scared of being taken over. Well, at Tomorrow Trust, when I started it, and I've been in nonprofit for now 23 years, I've always said that when one of our alumni can sit in my chair as CEO, then I've really done my job. And I so look forward to doing that. And we have some of our alumni now already in middle management. And it would give me no greater pleasure than to step down to see someone who started at Tomorrow Trust in grade 10, worked through grade 12, got their degree, and now is sitting in a CEO position. So I think leadership and leaders have to really acknowledge that there is a time for you to step down. And instead of just sitting there and not being dynamic in your company or in your position anymore, it's time to step down and allow new blood and new energy to walk in. So for me, there are different points of leaders and accessing and looking for and developing that leadership. First of all, you have to witness potential. And there's always potentiality in everyone. But it's how you look at it and really know where their strengths and weaknesses lie. It's about acknowledging the potential within your team, as well as with Tomorrow Trust, it's all the students, and we have 1,500 of them from five years all the way through to our alumni who are now about 28, 29, and really looking and seeing what is the potential that lies within them. It's about communicating this intention that you have seen their potential and how are you going to develop it with them? You see, the big trick is in developing and accessing leadership is that you cannot do it for someone. You have to do it as a team. And then you have to develop that potential. And how do you do that as a team? It really is through communication. It's developing that individual, not the way you want to develop them, but the way that together you can see the path and develop it together so that they may be more of who they can actually be, whether that be through coaching or education or simply mentoring them. So I've got one story to share. Tomorrow Trust supports orphan and vulnerable children with education in order to break the cycle of poverty. I don't believe, and we've had a lot of this discussion over the last two days, um, in keeping someone on charity, on food parcels, you're really not doing them a favor, and you're certainly not doing the country a favor. It doesn't help with your economic situation. And in South Africa, Johannesburg, where I live, we've been rated the most despairing um, city in the world. That means the rich are way richer than the poor. And we have the majority of people, um, the South African dream and the South African rainbow really hasn't reached them as was promised to them. So Tomorrow Trust works with the poorest of the poor and the most disadvantaged. And most of them come from childhood households because of HIV AIDS. Their parents have been um, obviously taken from them. And Carabo is a perfect example of accessing and developing leadership. Carabo came to me. She was one of my first students ever. She had homeschooled grade 10, 11, and 12 because they didn't have money to send her to school. She managed to get a university pass, but she had no way of actually getting there. She was introduced to me. She came on. She did a degree in economics. And with our partnership, because we work very closely with corporates, as with Zenzar, we actually own shares in Zenzar company in South Africa because they felt, as Ganesh was saying this morning, that if they wanted to work in a country, yes, we have laws that they have to abide by, but he wanted to know that their money was going to be used for good. So he, being an Indian, and his heart is really in CSR, he decided to become a partner in the real term with Tomorrow Trust. So as with Carabo, one of our big partners is PricewaterhouseCoopers, PwC. And they sponsored her through university, and she went there for vacation work. And then she worked there for three and a half years, and she's now with Nedbank, one of our banks. She's studying law part-time, and she sits on our board of trustees as an alumni and as a trustee member. Now, that was really about seeing that <coughs> spark in her and accessing and developing that potential. So that is what Tomorrow Trust does. We believe in potentiality in everyone. How you develop it is going to be you. As a leader, I believe that I have the responsibility to develop 
and impart my knowledge and my experience to others. Because only when a leader does that,